The Age of War was a period of 150 years that saw a near constant state of conflict develop between the various states of the Inner Sphere. It directly followed the unification of the disparate planetary groups during the 24th century and the 25 years of peace that began in the 2370s. During the early years of humanity's expansion into space, though there was the occasional border conflict, this was nothing compared to what would follow. In many ways though, the Age of War conjures images that are largely incongruent with the reality of those years. The fighting that permeated this period in history was an unusual mix, primarily low-level, low-casualty border disputes, not too dissimilar to the Third Succession War, but with occasional bursts of atrocities and unrestrained use of nuclear, chemical and biological weapons. Even still, the death toll from the combined 150 years would be surpassed by the comparatively brief reunification war that would immediately follow it. The idea of civilized warfare was one that first came to fruition during the Age of War, following the explosive Andurian War. This conflict, beginning in 2398, is today viewed as the official commencement of this dark chapter in history. Soon after, the Ares Conventions would come into being and have a lasting impact on the way wars were contested. Later, the publication of the Lorix Creed would cement the idea of the warrior as someone noble and worthy of the utmost respect. This period in history would see the last of the great houses make their debut with the rise of House Steiner in the Lyran Commonwealth. It would also see the near extinction of House Curita in the Dragonus Combine and the complete implosion of House Davian in the Federated Sons. But perhaps the most significant development during the Age of War was a technological one. It was during the mid-25th century that Battlemax first took to the field, revolutionising the art of war forever. What followed was a mad scramble as the neighbouring nations employed various methods to get their hands on their own Max. A study of the Age of War should be encouraged by all acolytes of history, as in many ways the political fallout from this time period is still being felt today in 3025. But doing so comes with its challenges. Many important documents from the period are missing and charting the continued expansion of the great powers is difficult to accomplish with any degree of accuracy. With only fragmentary records to draw upon, there are unfortunate gaps in our knowledge. The first comprehensive interstellar map dates from the founding of the Star League in 2571, the culmination and conclusion to the entire Age of War. From this we can extrapolate backwards where records allow, but the further back we go, inevitably errors will creep in, particularly as we approach the borders of the periphery about which we know so little. It's quite probable that the outward expansion of nations continued gradually throughout the age, but for the sake of our analyses, we can only display the end point throughout. Before delving into the Age of War proper, it would be beneficial to take a brief look at the relative fortunes of the six major powers at the turn of the century. In the Terran hegemony, the role of Director General had passed from McKenna to his relative Michael Cameron. One particularly noteworthy reform introduced during his reign was the introduction of the Peer List, a modernised form of nobility. Though these weren't hereditary titles at first, it was an idea that would disseminate across the Inner Sphere, and soon the rest of the neighbouring realms had their own equivalent. This period of time also saw a gradual strengthening of the family's ties to the role of Director General. After Michael, the directorship passed through several eras before coming to rest with his grandson Brian. By the end of the century, the Camerons were so ingrained in the political landscape that even the allegation that he was behind the death of his unpopular brother wasn't enough to stop Brian from ascending to the top step of government. Once in power, he began to construct so-called Castles Brian, a series of expansive fortifications across the border of the Terran hegemony. The Federated Sons had already seen a presidency pass between half a dozen Davians in its short life. For the most part, things were going well, but a looming shadow was hanging over the nation. A problem of succession had developed between the twin sons of the unpopular Etienne Davian and the only child of Etienne's younger brother, Paul. Both the brothers had served as president at one point, adding further complexities to the issue. For the time being, the president of the Federated Sons was Etienne and Paul's sister, Marie, who hoped to hand the reins to Paul's son once he was old enough. In the Draconis Combine, there was no question that it was the Kirita dynasty that would continue to inherit the role of coordinator. Shiro's son Tenno succeeded him, and afterwards Tenno's son Nihongi. The latter had been an ineffectual ruler and had gradually alienated all of his supporters and family. Before any action was taken to remove him from power, a horse riding accident saw him lose his life, and the seat of power passed to his militant son Robert. Across the border in the Lyran Commonwealth, the Marsden coup had brought about a dramatic improvement for the fledgling nation. This was not to last, however, as in 2395, a botched assault against Promised Land resulted in the death of the Archon under suspicious circumstances. A military takeover was narrowly avoided with the ascension of Robert's brother, Alistair, a junior officer in the Lyran Armed Forces. The Free Worlds League remained the most democratic of all the major powers, with no single family dominating the political landscape. 
However, cracks were starting to develop between the powerful houses Marek of Atreus and Salage of Regulus. The newest of all the great powers, the Capellan Confederation, had a score to settle with its neighbours. Franco Liao had not long delayed in strengthening his family's ties to the seat of Chancellor, and his position was inherited by his warmonger son Kerneth. It was he that would ultimately start the Age of War by launching the Angurian Campaign. Over the course of the next century and a half, three separate major wars would be fought over these worlds. The Capellans would also begin a brutal war of extremes with the Torian Concordat. The Lydon Commonwealth would suffer a major thrust on each of its borders in the early 25th century, before beginning their infamous Long March campaign in retaliation. The only border that was relatively quiet during this time was between the Draconis Combine and Federated Sons, but that was merely because the two had not yet advanced to the point of close proximity. By the beginning of the 26th century, they too were launching constant probes and raids against each other. But by far the largest and most destructive conflict of the entire age was waged within the borders of a single state. The Davian Civil War was a four-way battle for supremacy of enormous complexity as various branches of the family fought for dominance. 